What is up guys, welcome to your 28th Java game development tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be finishing up this core class which is pretty much all the code that we reuse over and over so we don't have to keep typing it over again and we're going to be building two methods update and draw. Now two things about these your update method and your draw method are going to be unique every tutorial pretty much so instead of filling these with useless code we're going to overwrite them every time we use this class so we're pretty much all we have to do is make the method headers and we don't need to put anything in the body form so um, it's literally going to take about 14 seconds to do so update animation and just name this public void update and you're going to need to pass in long time passed and all you have to do here is add an empty body just like that actually take that line out right there and that's all and since we have to be um, use this method whenever we inherit all we have to do is fill in the body of this and since you don't really know what you're updating you just know that you're gonna have an update method that's why we need to do this and the next one is just the same um, our draw method draws to the screen and public abstract void draw and as a parameter it takes graphics 2d and g and we don't even need a body for that uh, so let's go ahead and let me make sure I didn't mess anything up no errors or anything so this pretty much you should know what all of this does already um, I just wanted to type it out for you guys in a tutorial or two so you guys can just copy it and see what I'm working with so this is the code that we don't have to type ever again thank God we just have to type it this one time and we can just inherit it from now on so I go I went ahead and let's get to the meat of this tutorial I went ahead and made another class right here called key test to demonstrate what I'm gonna be teaching you and that's how to get keystrokes or events from the user now as you can see instead of having to type all that code again I just extends core which means inherits from this core.java and now it inherits everything in here how awesome is that so now the only other weird thing I did is I did something that says implements key listener now what a key listener is is whenever you need to get information from the user you have to put a listener on something and what a listener is it says alright wait for an event to happen so we're gonna be adding a key listener to a window and what this window is gonna do is it's gonna wait for the user to press a keystroke on their keyboard or wait for them to click a mouse or wait for them to do anything and that's what listeners do they pretty much just wait listen for you to do something and whenever you do something it runs a bit of code for you so um, you'll see later on but that's why I said implements key listener that's what we're doing we're implementing a listener or making our computer wait for something to happen and if you're wondering why this is underlined uh, key listener has three methods in it that we need to implement since uh, well we implemented from it so let's go ahead and do that right now well not right now but in a little bit so you already see that I called this run method so that's what we're gonna be doing first after we make a couple variables private string mess for message and this set is equal to nothing by the way the program that I'm building all we uh, cool someone's alarms going off outside that's not gonna be annoying at all Oh, good stopped all we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be typing a letter on our keyboard and when we type it it draws on the screen and it says like you press s or something and when we release it it's gonna print out on our screen you released s or something but it's just to demonstrate how you can actually send information to your game and get some information back and later instead of just having stupid words we're gonna be moving around uh, images and stuff like that but once you see how key listeners work and stuff like this uh, it's gonna be really easy to move forward so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna make this string variable that's what's gonna print out on our screen we don't need to set it to anything yet be set because we didn't do anything yet now for our um, actually let's make something like init this is gonna be my init method but it's also call init from super class 
So this method right here is going to be public void init. And usually, th if you already created a method, this would override this method, this init, where are you, init, right here. But what we want to do first is we want to call this method specifically. So in order, since we inherited from the superclass right here, how can we call a method from the superclass? Anytime you want to specifically call a method from the superclass, what you need to do is the, is put super dot and then the method name. And in this case, it's in it. And if you hover over this, it says void dot core dot in it. So that means you're calling in it not only this one from the key test class, but from the superclass called core. So that's how you do that. Next, in our initializing uh, method, we need to create our window object. And our window object is just screen dot uh, get full screen window, just like that. Pretty cool. And now we need to do a couple weird things, but we definitely need them. W dot set focus. Where are you? Focus uh, right here. Traversal keys enabled, and we want to set this equal to false. Now let me explain what this means. Set focus traversal keys enabled a long method, but it does something really easy. Whenever you type like, how can I explain this? Whenever you're on a website and you press like tab, you know that it doesn't just type out something. It does something weird. Like it moves to the next form field, or maybe if you're on your window and you press tab, it moves all around objects. What we want this to set tab to is pretty much don't do anything weird like that just be a tab button like every other button why can't you just be normal tab button so this pretty much says make all your weird buttons um weird and if it was true there'd be weird still but we want false and that just makes your buttons like tab act like normal buttons and after this what we want to do is add that key listener so a key listener you can put on pretty much any object so but we want the window to listen for keys so whenever we're focusing on our window that's what's going to be waiting and ha and waiting for things to happen so w dot add key listener and as your uh, parameter you put what do you want to add is your key listener just go ahead and put this and that'll make your window the key listener so you can put it on uh, different things but we want the window to wait since I mean it's the only thing I really can do for now and after this after we have our key listener and took care of all our weird stuff we need to set a message to draw um, first so what we're gonna do is in order to exit this program we're gonna use the escape key we're gonna do something weird with that so press escape to exit and later on we're gonna do something weird that says alright whenever the user presses the escape key um, instead of doing what our program regularly does, we want you to stop the entire program and exit. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. That's all the time I have. But for the first thing we had to do when we run the program initially is pretty much call our super classes initialization function. Um, create a window that's pretty much equal to what you're looking at, the full screen. Uh, we want to take all the weird methods off of tab and uh, stuff like that we want to add an object that so when we press a key something actually actually is waiting for it to happen and if we don't add a key listener to anything we're just gonna press a key and your computer's gonna be like oh duh I don't know what's gonna happen now we actually have did I just delete that all? did I seriously just delete that? and now since we have a key listener we actually have this window waiting for something to happen so it can actually get that information of what key it pressed and do something with it so that's what that does and we added it to this which is pretty much the window and we gave you a message by default on the screen we didn't need to do this but um, it's nice to know it's nice to see something when you're first starting out so in the next tutorial we're gonna be learning how to make key presses and key releases and stuff like that so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next tutorial